NATO's Secretary General, Jens Stoltenberg, has accused Moscow of trying to use winter as a weapon of war. Russia continues to bombard the war-torn nation with aerial attacks, damaging gas infrastructure, power lines and electricity. Stoltenberg has pledged to give more weapons to Ukraine and help fix the critical energy infrastructure there. Yesterday, NATO renewed its vow to one day welcome Ukraine to the body, a pledge that some officials and analysts believe helped prompt Russia's invasion this year. For more analysis on these developments, we are going to speak to the Russia-Ukraine conflict and uh, we're joined now by a Ukrainian-based journalist, Katarina Malafeva, and we also, she, we're also joined by Professor John Stremlau. He sits with us here in Johannesburg. He's with the faculty of international relations at Wits University. To the both of you, my thanks for making time for this important conversation. Katarina, can I just start with you? Are you able to describe the situation for us as it holds right now in Ukraine? Good morning. Um, well, here in Kyiv, where I'm uh, currently right now, um, uh, the situation, you know, it, it's winter, uh, it's snowy, and at the same time it came with, um, um, for us, with um, lack of power, electricity, for example, I'm talking to you right now via landline, and I'm not able to join via video because suddenly this morning the, um, the electricity was um, uh, stopped, so uh, there are... Um, there is a big progress on certain directions conducted by the Ukrainian army. It's in uh, Kharkiv region and Kherson region where Ukraine managed to liberate uh, several key uh, cities and villages as well. Uh, but there is a very difficult situation in Donbass as it's been for the past eight years, in particular in, uh, um, in the direction of Bakhmut, uh, the former name of it is Artyomov, uh, where the Ukrainian forces uh, are fighting against the uh, Wagner mercenaries, uh, it's very, there are very harsh conditions because, you know, the weather and climate varies uh, from the area to area. You probably see on the internet the um, uh, horrible pictures of Ukrainian military in the trenches full of mud and water. Uh, so, and uh, more than 50% of Ukrainian infrastructure over, overall is uh, um, I'm talking about the electricity infrastructure, power infrastructure is damaged, destroyed. So it's, it's common now for Ukrainians to, to be without uh, electricity um, in, in big cities like uh, Kiev, Odessa, uh, Lviv, uh, uh, etc. Mm, and also quite often uh, in those liberated villages and cities, um, like Kherson, Kharkiv region, Izum, Kupensk, people stay without heating uh, and water often and gas as well. So yeah. it's, it's kind of a green uh, prospect of the situation at the moment. All right, Katarina, I'm going to ask you to just stay on the line for us. Let's bring Professor John Stemlau into the conversation. Prof, I hope you were able to hear at least part of what Katerina had to say there. And in part, it's got to do with the fact that they are out of power as we speak. Let's start with the assertion that Russia intends using this winter period as a weapon of war. Explain that to us in much simpler terms. What do you understand that to be exactly? Well, exactly as you said, it is a weapon of war and is to wear down the resistance that has been so heroic by the Ukrainian people since the uh, February 24th invasion. And it's important to note that the, the, uh, the, the NATO meeting spent the first day speaking about nothing other than how do you help the Ukrainian people rebuild the grid as fast as possible so that they can survive in this winter that Katerina uh, explained so poignantly. And that is the overwhelming priority at the moment. Yeah. Katerina, let, let's come back to you. Has there been any reaction from the capital of Ukraine? I'm talking about President Volodymyr Zelensky on the back of the NATO Secretary General. 
promising that one day Ukraine will be welcomed into NATO. Has there been any reaction around that? Ukrainian position is quite clear here. So it's been consistent for, for years that Ukraine wants uh, to join NATO and um, shows, uh, it shows that it's ready to, to do so. So, um, you know, the Ukrainian officials, um, uh, not only Zelensky, but also his uh, inner circle, uh, they're claiming that uh, uh, we, we are ready and uh, we stick to our commitment. We want the same um, from, the, um, uh, from the NATO allies. But as, as far as I understand, so uh, this decision is long overdue. The promises, um, you know, the promises have been uh, for already 14 years, and uh, uh, there were a lot of partners, NATO partners, who uh, hesitated, who didn't want uh, uh, the uh, direct involvement, the, the Ukraine to join NATO because they didn't want to irritate Putin, they didn't want to irritate uh, Russia. Uh, so in this uh, uh, in this way, basically, Russia decided to make a preventive uh, hit and uh, invaded Ukraine. Uh, that the scale of the Russian bear uh, is afraid of NATO. Mm, uh, and that happened in Georgia in 2008, and it happened in Ukraine in 2022. Yeah. Professor Stremlau, let's pick up on that very point around what Stoltenberg said yesterday, and that is to one day welcome Ukraine into NATO. Ostensibly, this is what some say sparked this war in the first place. Is that likely to come to pass? It will likely come to pass, but first uh, the Ukrainians have to um, uh, reach some resolution of this conflict, and they're doing so very heroically. And NATO members, this is not a NATO operation, but NATO members have donated more than $40 billion of military equipment, but now they're turning their attention to rebuilding the infrastructure so that the Ukrainian people can survive the, the winter. And, and, and yet um, uh, the 2008 very controversial decision that was advocated by George W. Bush uh, for Georgia and Ukraine to, to uh, uh, join NATO someday when they qualify, uh, but they both want to, uh, Georgia then was invaded in 2008, as Katerina said, and in 2014, the Russians uh, annexed Crimea and uh, the regions of the eastern part of Ukraine, which uh, they then granted annexation to in, um, in, uh, in, in September of this year. And that has provoked, again, uh, demands by the Ukrainians, which are understandable, to join NATO. But uh, under Article 5, it would mean the collective uh, self-defense, uh, and there, the, the, uh, the NATO members are not agreed on that, so they have to operate by consensus. So they're not going to uh, reach any agreement as yet, but I think one day Ukraine will join NATO. And, Katerina, that could likely intensify the war, at least on the part of Russia, to hear such statements coming from NATO. Has there been any reaction from Russia around the statements that were made by NATO yesterday? Um, indeed, this is the, the, well, how people in Russia, and not only the Kremlin narrative, but also people in Russia clearly uh, see, of course they're brainwashed with propaganda, but they, they see the war in Ukraine, as they call it, a special military operation, is the the, uh, the war against uh, the West, the war against NATO, and they are, um, they, 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 you know, the Kremlin feeds them up with uh, narratives that uh, there are foreign mercenaries fighting in Ukraine, and, and Russian people clearly believe that uh, they are fighting against uh, the NATO, against the, the, the West, right? So that's why they would probably, Kremlin would uh, wage war would do whatever is possible to continue this war, to uh, keep uh, uh, terrorizing the Ukrainian population. Uh, and so uh, my understanding is that, uh, you know, among the Ukrainian people, I just want to also add that even before the invasion, 
uh, there will, there was some sort of split uh, on opinion whether Ukraine needs to join the alliance. But uh, uh, I think that after 24th of February this year, uh, more people understand the need for that. Um, that that uh, they they want to to join the bloc, uh, and because. Uh, well, we also remember another situation, another case that uh, U.S. Uh, and Russia promised uh, um, a long time ago uh, when, when, the, when Ukraine refused to uh, refused from the nuclear weapons, uh, the guarantees uh, and it didn't, uh, the guarantees to um, get involved in case of war, and uh, you know what happened, right? So yeah. Ukraine has um, the neutral status and. Um, obviously, uh, the neutrality uh, uh, for Ukraine is not a solution. So uh, it's, uh, it would be helpful. It would be helpful for everyone. Um, All right. For Ukraine to be a part of this big alliance. Professor Stremlau, let's conclude the conversation. A similar question to you: If NATO, or if Ukraine rather, does eventually become part of NATO. I don't see how it is that Russia will not intensify this war on Ukraine, but also importantly, if Ukraine becomes part of NATO, is that not going to spark what the Western leaders have been trying to avoid for the longest time, and that is to spark another world war, which they said quite clearly at the start of this war, that that is something that they are going to do their best to avoid. They will try to avoid that, and I think it's worth remembering that we grossly exaggerated the strength of the former Soviet Union, which collapsed overnight, just like the Nationalist Party collapsed overnight in this country, thanks to the struggle of pro-democratic forces. And I think what we have to do is just wait and see what the Russian people, whether they not they hold uh, the dictator Putin to account or not, but it will surprise us when it happens because we cannot forecast that. Professor John Stremlau, thank you very much for your analysis of this situation and my thanks to a Ukrainian-based journalist Katerina Malafeva joining us from Kharkiv there.